come home to later. In the news this morning, the first elements of the U.S. invasion force in Panama have returned to the United States. At the same time, a group of U.S. diplomats is returning after being expelled from Nicaragua. In college football, Notre Dame and Miami have staked claims to the national championship after bowl game victories last night. And for much of the country, January is starting out much warmer than December. I'm John Palmer. This is Tuesday, January 2nd, 1990. This is NBC News at Sunrise with John Palmer. Good morning. Two co-defendants of Panamanian General Manuel Noriega face drug trafficking charges in a Miami courtroom today. This while Noriega remains holed up in the Vatican Embassy in Panama City, still avoiding capture by U.S. military forces. As NBC News correspondent Don Oliver reports this morning, a small number of those U.S. troops have returned home. The American troop withdrawal from Panama has begun, but just a few have been released. 141 soldiers returned to Fort Ord, California, aboard two planes out of Panama. Presidential spokesman Marlon Fitzwater gave no timetable for the removal of additional troops. The new Panamanian president, Andara, now says Noriega should be tried first in the U.S., then brought back to Panama for trial. He said he is willing to be patient. We have to give the nuncio and the Pope the time to, do, to, to, to make a resolution of this. U.S. forces continued to maintain a tight ring around the Vatican Embassy, where Noriega has been in refuge since Christmas Eve. But even this activity no longer has the sort of tenseness it had last week. The U.S. military used loudspeakers to wish Panamanians a Happy New Year. And things were so calm, a wedding party posed at a checkpoint and called for justice for Noriega. Don Oliver, NBC News, Panama City. While the first few American soldiers return from Panama, American diplomats are headed home from Nicaragua, expelled by the Sandinista government there. NBC's John Seisloff reports from Managua. The American diplomats and their families headed back to the United States late Monday, caught in the middle of a diplomatic confrontation between Nicaragua and the United States. Nicaragua ordered the diplomats expelled after U.S. troops in Panama raided the Nicaraguan ambassador's residence there Friday. President Daniel Ortega told reporters the Panama incident brought Nicaragua and the United States very close to war. If Nicaragua had responded by raiding the U.S. ambassador's residence in Managua, he said, the U.S. would have sent in troops. In the annual New Year's Day Mass, Cardinal Obandoe Bravo asked for this year to be one of peace and reconciliation in Nicaragua. But Sandinista officials are bracing for more confrontation. They say they expect the United States to respond with its own round of expulsions of Nicaraguan diplomats in Washington. A U.S. diplomat here would say only the U.S. will have a reaction to this. John Seisloff, NBC News, Managua. In other news this morning, Czechoslovakia's new president, playwright Václav Havel, is in Berlin today, meeting with East German leaders. Later today, he heads to Munich for talks with West German officials. In his New Year's speech, Havel said honesty would be the cornerstone of his government. He said 40 years of lies by communist leaders left the country in deep economic trouble. Havel also announced a program of amnesty for thousands of inmates jailed under the old regime. In this country, the New Year brings hope of a settlement to the nine-month-old strike against the Pittston Coal Company. A tentative agreement was announced Monday, and miners were expected to vote on it in about a week's time. More on this report from NBC News correspondent James Polk. On this New Year's Day, no picket lines outside the West Virginia mines. But striking miners still wore battle dress as they listened to the announcement of a settlement of their bitter nine-month walkout. I'm tickled to death that we're going to get to go back to work. If we go back to work, it's just a tentative agreement. I just have to wait and see, you know, what they agree on might not be what we agree on. The strike began when the Pittston Company stopped its payments into a national fund for health care for retired coal miners. Hundreds were arrested in sit-down protests outside mine gates. Mines became armed camps as Pittston hired replacement workers. Labor Secretary Elizabeth Dole announcing the settlement gave no details on the deal, but the union president said miners are ready to make peace with Pittston. We can continue to scratch each other's eyes out, or we can try to set a relationship where we work together. It will be at least a week and a half 
before miners get a chance to vote on approving the new contract. James Polk, NBC News, Washington. Off the coast of Morocco this morning, a race against time to head off an ecological disaster. 18 million gallons of crude oil, that's about 8 million more than the Alaskan oil spill, have gushed from a damaged Iranian tanker. The slick, now 175 miles long, is 19 miles from the Moroccan coast and drifting closer. And cleanup operations are underway this morning in this country on the Monongahela River near Pittsburgh, where as much as 10,000 gallons of gasoline have spilled from a runaway barge. Officials say currents on the river, fed by melting ice, uh, were especially strong at the time of the accident there. And when we come back this morning, Don Gould recaps a very busy day and night in college football. The Sports Report is next on NBC News at Sunrise. personal philosophy of success. We have a sacred trust to protect our customers. But its impact was felt on California Street. To maintain conservative policies. On Lincoln Street and Acorn Street. To put the interest of our clients first. Dean Witter put principles before profit, people before portfolios. There are many ways to measure success on Wall Street. We measure success one investor at a time. Dean Witter, a member of the Sears Financial Network. Saturday morning in Ford County. I see you got a new Chevy. Yep. That's a pretty smart buy when you amortize the cost of depreciation as it relates to inflation in the GNP. Yep. In fact, when compared with Ford Ranger, Chevy S10 has held more of its value model years 1984 through 88. Yep, and they say they've been worth more when you trade them in, too. A tradition of higher resale value. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. Nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Yep. Send up a cross foot. Give me an app check. There's a place in the friendly skies where not everyone's so friendly. Stop. Hold it. I need three hours. Get them up. Check it out. Over 9,000 mechanics of United Airlines work Give here. Give me a mini grinder. They're picky, fussy, stubborn. But if you fly, they're the best friends you'll ever have. United, rededicated to giving you the service okay. you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Now, sitting in for Don Crickey, here's Don Gould with the Daily Sports Report. Good morning, Don. Just finished, John. Thank you very much. One of the major problems or major charms of the world is that things never appear tied up in neat little packages. Well, take, for instance, the National Championship of Collegiate Football. All Colorado had to do was beat Notre Dame in the Orange Bowl last night. But the Rocket, Rocky Bishmael, had other ideas. And as he's done so against so many other opponents this year, Broke the game wide open with a 35-yard reverse from Tony Wright for a touchdown in the third quarter. Lou Holtz was fighting Irish, beat the Colorado Buffaloes 21-6. Before their legion of fans start party plans celebrating the second straight national championship, perhaps they should take into consideration the Sugar Bowl outcome. Craig Erickson threw one of his three touchdown passes to Bob Chudzinski in the third quarter as Miami defeated Alabama 33-25. In doing so, Erickson may have handed his head coach, Dennis Erickson, no relation to national title in his first year. Well, after all, the Hurricanes had soundly defeated Notre Dame a few weeks ago. As for the other games, perhaps a fitting conclusion to Bo Schembechler's 21 years at Michigan. He's always had trouble winning in the Rose Bowl and had trouble keeping his poise in this one as USC beat the Wolverines 17-10. With 70 seconds to go, the Trojans' Ricky Irvins broke a tie game with a 14-yard run, and Bo had to be content with 194 career victories and a 2-8 mark in the Rose Bowl. It was a round for Florida State in the Fiesta Bowl. The Seminoles' Peter Tom Willis engineered his team to 34 unanswered points against Nebraska in a 41-17 victory. And in the Cotton Bowl, Tennessee with Chuck Webb rushing for 250 yards outscored Arkansas 31-27. It was the Volunteers' 600th win. Well, in the Hall of Fame Bowl, Auburn came from behind to whip Ohio State 31-14 at the Citrus Bowl. Illinois finally won a bowl game, their first victory after five losses since 1964. Came at the expense of Virginia 31-21. Polls come out later today, John. One thing's for certain, a lot of people are going to be unhappy with 1990. Thank you, Don. The new year is bringing milder temperatures to much of the country. Joe Whitty's national forecast is next on NBC News at Sunrise.
This is my husband, Paul. He's under a lot of pressure. But now he's taking charge of his health, eating right by cutting down on cholesterol and saturated fat. That's why I cook with Puritan, with no cholesterol and proven 94% saturated fat-free, better than any other kind of oil. You like Paul sneakers before dinner? Hey, Mr. Principal, carry your books? Anytime. <laughs> Paul's feeling great, and I am too. Puritan, make it your oil for life. Would the Folgers Crystal's restaurant switch work in your home? Mrs. Oliver tried. I got up first and went down to the kitchen. But instead of using our brewed coffee, I used Folgers Crystal. I took a cup up to Greg. Then I waited for his reaction. I thought it was freshly brewed coffee. Totally unaware, totally surprised that it was instant coffee. As the coffee was coming out, I could smell the aroma. I said, I think I got a winner here. It was great coffee. Yeah, whatever. I'm glad I was tricked. Folgers Crystal's so dark and rich, why don't you try the switch? Listen to me. I want you to cross at the corner and look both ways because people today will run right over you. Today, the streets are even more dangerous than you think. You like flying? I got something that'll really make you fly. So talk to your kids about drugs or somebody else will. If you've been out of school for 10, 20, or even 50 years, it's time you went back. Not as a student, but as a volunteer. Your knowledge, your concern, your love might make the difference between a youngster going wrong or going on to a successful and productive life. The more you know, the more your schools need you. So find out what you can do and then do it. A lot of different people started off the new year in a lot of very different ways, but one way was really different. For 150 people in Milwaukee, it was go jump in the lake, Lake Michigan, with a temperature around 28 degrees. It might leave you cold, but the Polar Bear Club stages this chilling event every year. And for the first time in many, many weeks, Joe Whitty joins us this morning without a chilling event in the weather. And here's his forecast. Joe, good morning. Morning, John. Yes, indeed. For the East Coast, finally a break from a very bitter December. We had 28 cities east of the Mississippi reporting record cold for the month of December. All-time record cold. Bridgeport, Connecticut reporting all-time record low. And New York City reporting the coldest uh, December, uh, third coldest December. Meanwhile, finally in the West, they're getting some rain and snow. San Francisco has hardly had a drop since Thanksgiving. The latest time lapse shows a storm moving now over the mountains. San Francisco's rain has ended, but that was welcome rain, and now we have snow advisors for the mountains just east of L.A. and San Diego, as far south as that. And there'll be 6 to 12 inches in the southern Sierra of welcome snow. They've had a very dry December. The snow is spreading later today into Nevada, Utah, and later on into the Rocky Mountain states. And east of the Rockies, lots of sunshine, warm southerly winds, a chance of a few showers around Texas. Sunshine in the northeast, welcome sunshine here. And along with that, some mild temperatures for this time of year. Take a look at the highs today. Highs will be in the 40s and 50s over the south and the east. That's a welcome change. Florida in the 70s, out west, a pocket of cold air over the Rockies, down over the southern Sierra Nevadas, and 80s for Hawaii. Meanwhile, for Alaska, highs will be in the teens. And Denver will have one more nice day before the storm moves up and over the Rockies tomorrow. 53 for high today. Dallas, Fort Worth going up to 62. Chicago's high, a mild 44 degrees on this, the second day of 1990. That is my national weather. Now here's what's happening in your neighborhood. Well, places like L.A. going up to 58 degrees, rather chilly. Atlanta, 54. Miami, 76. Dallas, Fort Worth, 62. Minneapolis, St. Paul, 39. Coming up next, a chilling forecast for your heating bills in January. John? Thanks, Jill. The news continues in just a minute. You're watching NBC News at Sunrise. I'm Brian Gumbel. Later this morning on Today, join me and my co-host for the day, John Chancellor. We'll talk with New York's new mayor, David Dinkins, and preview your tax problems later this morning on Today. If your wedding plans have gotten hectic, if the parties and the pop are just too much to handle, call Busy Lad Rent All. They can provide all the help you'll need, from the invitations to the wedding decorations and reception needs. Just call their wedding consultant. Then relax while Busy Lad helps arrange the wedding of your dreams. Remember, it's never too early to begin planning for the perfect wedding day. 
busy lad rent all Tupelo and Amory. Play Jeopardy and get that Mississippi spirit. Here are some of the stories we're following this Tuesday morning on NBC News at Sunrise. A small number of U.S. troops has been withdrawn from Panama. A tentative agreement between the United Mine Workers and the Pittston Coal Company has been announced. And in business news, a new chief executive for Campbell's. Details just ahead. New York City has a new newspaper, but it's not like any other. The paper is called Street News, and it's written for, by, and about homeless people. As NBC's Mary Alice Williams reports this morning on Another Look, it has the most dedicated sales force in the city. Sales representative for Street News, a newspaper that's helping to support the murderous homeless. Mark is one of a small army of street people now working for an enterprise that helps the homeless help themselves. No handouts here, it's straight capitalism, selling newspapers for a profit. Newspapers that serve not only their readership, but also their homeless sales force. I might make $175 with tips, and people just giving me the dollars and things like that. The paper really helps out. And selling this paper doesn't mean just money in Mark's pocket. Street News has a forced savings plan that will help him get out of the shelters and into his own apartment, something that can't happen fast enough for him. I'm also a homeless person. Nearly 150 homeless people are trying to work their way out of the shelters and subways selling this paper. It's the brainchild of this man, former rock musician Hutchinson Persons, who established Street Aid, an organization to help the homeless, a year ago. He saw that while handouts might give them dinner, work gives them dignity. And this was a powerful, untapped workforce. We're setting people up as independent business people, independent sales people, uh, selling and working for a living um, where they're their own boss again, you might say, selling and working at their own rate. And I think there's a big difference between that and just a handout. Street News is published with the help of corporations large and small, chock full of articles by and about the homeless, and lots of celebrity columnists who offered their shared experiences, inspirational messages. Even the classified ads are aimed at the sales force, a place to redeem bottles and cans, an employer who accepts referrals from soup kitchens. Bert Richter lost his apartment when his business failed. I never envisioned myself being in this situation. In fact, three months ago, I couldn't possibly imagine it. I think a lot of people just are not aware how easily it can happen. Richter has gone from Street News' top salesman to its principal recruiter of homeless workers. He made a thousand dollars. I took him with me a couple of days ago. Right now, we could take you to make money. Right now, I'll put money in your pocket within the next hour. Let's do it. You All right. Know. What's your name? What's your name? What's this? Garbage. Throw it out. You it. The homeless get their first 10 papers on credit and sell them for 75 cents each. They use that money to buy more. A salesman who really hustles can make a couple hundred dollars a day. A nickel on every paper goes into an account that can be spent only on housing. The thing is to make sure that people start by getting a place to live, and that's what we're, we're oriented towards, is trying to get somebody off the street, out of the subway station, off the cardboard, and into their own place that they care about and they take pride in. Before I came homeless, I looked down on homeless people too. You know, like, just walk past me, they didn't exist to me. You know, but now that I'm there, I know what it is. Being homeless, it's, it's a hurting feeling. Mary Ellen Williams there with another look. I'll have more news. Connie Mitchell will take a look at Wall Street. And Joe Whitty has another look at the weather when we return on NBC News at Sunrise. The return of the first U.S. troops from Panama tops our news this morning. Two artillery batteries left Panama for California's Fort Ord on New Year's Day, the first elements of the American invasion force to be pulled out. 26,000 U.S. troops remain in Panama, including the 12,000 permanently assigned there. In other news, a tentative agreement has been reached in the United Mine Workers' bitter nine-month-old strike against the Pittston Coal Company. Hundreds of miners were arrested for taking part in the demonstrations during the walkout. 
which began when the company stopped paying health care benefits for retired minors. A ratification vote scheduled within 10 days. More than 100 Soviet Jews arrived in Israel today aboard the first ever El Al flight from Moscow. As NBC's Ike Siemens reports this morning, the new immigrants are the first of what is expected to be a huge exodus of Soviet Jews to Israel. The El Al charter from Moscow arrived packed with Soviet Jews immigrating to Israel. They'd been trying to get out of the Soviet Union for years. But few showed emotion during what had to be one of the most important moments of their lives. It's expected that a quarter million Soviet Jews will have this experience as new immigrants in the next three years, thanks to improved relations between Israel and the Soviet Union. This morning in Jerusalem, a spokesman for the Jewish agency which handles immigration said the new arrivals this year alone could be overwhelming. Many of us believe that the numbers can be also around 80,000, 100,000 Jews from Russia. As the stream of immigrants turns into a flood, Israel has a dilemma. Where will they all live with housing at a premium, and where will they work? Ike Siemens, NBC News, Tel Aviv. In business news, a new chief executive for Campbell's. Capping off weeks of takeover rumors and dissent among board members, Campbell's announced it is searching for a CEO. That that search now, though, they say is over. The candidate chosen from outside the company could be named as early as today. And now looking ahead to today's market day, here's the Wall Street Journal's Connie Mitchell. Connie, good morning. Good morning. Well, on this first business day of the new year, what's the outlook? What's the mood on Wall Street? The mood is optimistic but cautious. Investors want to believe that this year's performance in the markets can meet or at least beat last year's, but they realize that to do so will require very careful um, sometimes picky sort of portfolio management this year. And what was last year's performance? What was the Dow? How did it do last year? The Dow Jones and the S&P were both up about approximately 27 percent last year, which is pretty good. And high-grade bonds were up between 14 and 19 percent last year. So what, there's a feeling now that investors are going to have to be a little more choosy this year maybe than they were last year? A little more choosy, that's right. The big concern, of course, is the economy. Will the economy continue to expand or will it fall into a recession? And can the Federal Reserve uh, restrain inflation? The cautiousness in the, in the stock market, of course, is showing up in the types of stocks that investors are switching to or chasing in, in some cases. Oil, pharmaceuticals, um, food and beverages, companies that tend to perform well even when the economy is uh, heading for tough times. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. And. Uh... When we come back, Alan Abelson takes uh, out his crystal ball. He will take a look at what lies ahead for the economy in the new decade. That and more coming up on NBC News at Sunrise. <laughs> At 7 p.m., how much does it cost to have Grandma in Philadelphia hear the first words of her grandson in Boston? Well, this may take a while. But with MCI's new primetime, this 25-minute call costs 26% less than with AT&T. And primetime lets you save no matter how long you talk. Even baby talk costs more on AT&T. So the choice that's right is the choice on the right. MCI's new primetime. Real savings 24 hours a day. Call now, get one month free. No matter where in the world you find yourself, if you lose your Visa Gold Card, we'll be sure to find you. Because Visa will deliver a new card and emergency cash right to you. Whether you're negotiating the powder in Zermatt, exploring the coral off Bermuda, or simply checking out some Puyi Fumé at the Hotel de la Bretèche, where you can't even check in with American Express. Visa Gold, it's everywhere you want to be. Bran muffins have more fiber than almost anything. Except prunes. Prunes, the high fiber fruit. It could be a dream or it could be a joke. It could be for real. It's for real. Bob Castleberry won $10 million. You can too if you enter the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes fast. $10 million, you know. But I can handle it all right. <laughs> 
There's a general consensus among economists that we will escape a recession in 1990, but our business reporter and Barron's editor, Alan Abelson, never one to merely go along with what is fashionable, has some different ideas about that, and he joins us this morning. Good morning, Alan. Good morning, John. You can tell that by my dress. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. And the same to you. You're going to ruin it for us this morning oh, by saying I'll we're going to have a recession? Oh, I'll be very general. I'm afraid, you know, the economy is much like a marathon runner, John, who has cramps in both legs. Uh, most economists, as you say, think the thing is going to stumble along and continue. This will be the eighth year in a row of higher ec economic activity. I'm afraid I don't see that. I think the basic problem is twofold. Autos and housing. Autos, of course, are really in trouble. They've stalled now for months. And I don't see this 1990 year being a very good one for the automobile industry. And yet autos and housing have been the things that have driven the economy ever since 1982. Well, why do some economists, a lot of economists, think we're going to be able to escape it, at least for 1990? Well, they're great at looking in rearview mirrors. That's the way, they have trouble forecasting the future. It's the only thing they have trouble forecasting. And I think the trouble is with economists is they tend to think that they extrapolate trends. They tend to think that everything that is will be. I think they don't realize how important it is. It, uh, the, the economy has really been as far as autos and housing goes. I don't think that they realize that there's been terrific excess they point to low inventories, but the kind of inventory we have is financial, John, and it's all debt. And we've what about got to Alan Greenspan, out. though, uh, and, and the Fed? Uh, is there a lot of hope that they can steer us through this? this well, point? Alan Greenspan was very nice at accumulating statistics. He was very bad at reading them as an economist. I don't think he's improved any as a Federal Reserve chairman. I think he's trying hard, but I don't think any chairman, and much less he, is going to be able to do it. I just don't see this as a very good year for the economy, John. Do you see a short or a long recession? I think that all depends. It depends on how quickly he, uh, Mr. Greenspan moves. Right offhand, I'd say it's going to be in the balance. It's too tough to call. Alan, Happy New Year. <laughs> and here's Joe Whitty. Joe? Another happy note about economics. Record cold in December put 28 cities in the east at record cold for the month of December. Oil prices went shooting up. So we're very interested about the outlook for the next month and the next 90 days. The outlook says the Northeast is going to stay frigid for the month of January and still dry for the ski areas despite today's snow out in the West. And the extended outlook for the next three months is not much more optimistic. Very cold around the Great Lakes and the East, cold dipping way down in the Nass. And also in the Rockies, we have a chance of some snow, but still relatively mild out in the West Coast. Now for today, short-term weather, expect some airport delays at Los Angeles with some morning rain. Phoenix has a chance of thunderstorms. Houston has a chance of some showers. Travelers over the western mountains, the southern Sierra Nevadas, and also the southern Rockies will find themselves with some heavy snow. Travel with care on those icy highways. John? Thanks, Joe. In Austin, Texas on Sunday, Mary Tolson went into labor. Her pregnant sister, Joan Thompson, drove her to the hospital, and she gave birth to a boy. That was just the beginning, though. A few hours later, Joan was back at the hospital, driven there by another pregnant sister, Carol. Joan had a boy, too. Well, you guessed it, shortly after the new year arrived, Carol went to the hospital and gave birth to twin boys. And you think you had a very busy holiday. That's NBC News at Sunrise for this Tuesday morning. I'm John Palmer. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a very nice day.